Congratulations for the state fair competition. They might have a small refrigerator for you to troubleshoot. And these are one of the easiest things to identify what some of the problems are because it's a very simple circuit. We just have really one motor. There's no fan motors with these small refrigerators. Everything's uh, natural convection. The condenser, you won't see a coil anywhere because it's actually behind in between the insulation and the casing on the inside and the outside. So sometimes when this thing's running, it might feel a little warm because the condenser coil is actually right underneath this panel. You can't see it. The other thing, this is a shell type evaporator where the evaporator's two plates stamped together and then they have grooves that are like raised up for the refrigerant to flow through. So this is where we should be feeling cold. Now before you even know if you can plug it in or not, so for example, somebody just dropped off this fridge, doesn't know what's wrong with it, just knows that it wasn't cooling, that's why it's here. You gotta do a few steps to sit before you can safely plug it in. Because if it's something wrong electrically, which most of our HVAC refrigeration equipment, it's 80% of the time gonna be an electrical problem. The other 20% would fall with a probably refrigeration problem. And the refrigeration problem could be the pumping of the compressor, it's running, but it's bad valves and it's not getting any difference of pressure. Could also be that it's, what is another refrigeration problem? What's the common one? What's the thing that we're always doing in level one that you had to do over and over and over again for your project to pass? What? Seal. Or so make sure it was sealed, yep. So what do we do? Put it in water. Yeah, what are you doing? What is that? Testing leak. Testing. Testing for a leak, yeah. So that's really actually, if it's a refrigeration problem, most common refrigeration problem is a leak problem where, where somebody saw it all used to be back in the day before they had frost free or the defrost the automatic defrost this would build up with a big block of ice and it wouldn't cool as well anymore because the ice would act like an insulator even though it's ice it still wouldn't cool all the food so they would get impatient and with a screwdriver start chipping away at the ice these things are very thin steel sometimes aluminum Chip this thing with a screwdriver, what have we just done if we scrape down onto one of those raised areas? Poked another we poked hole. a hole in it. So sometimes if you get one, you see oil down in here, what do traces of oil indicate? Leak. Leak. Where's the oil supposed to be? In the compressor, right about here. So could be if you see oil, it's probably not gonna be an electrical problem. Probably gonna be a refrigeration problem. Gonna have to use your senses for that. But if you don't see any oil and it looks pretty clean, before I just go plugging it in and then touching this unit. I could, if it's got a ditch short in it, electrocute myself. Or it could spark right here if it's shorted together somewhere. Or it could trip a breaker, hopefully, or blow a fuse, some sort of safety device. So before we do anything, we're going to go ahead and use our multimeter. Set it to continuity or ohms, depending on what it is. For level two, I got you some new meters to use this year. So I'm going to use this one right now, but I'm also going to show you that one as well, because that's the meter that you're going to be using in the contest and throughout the year. Which one's going to be ground? Uh, one bottom. bottom, one on the round, yep. So I'm gonna split this to ground, and I'm just gonna make sure one, we got a ground. So there's the green wire. We should have a beat, we should have continuity. But I should not have continuity if I touched either side here. And then it could be I'm not getting the circuit all the way through on one of these sides, because what switch would be turning on and off this compressor? Probably inside here somewhere. You got one in all of them. What's the name of that switch? Right there it is. There's the switch. See, it could have been off, but I don't know. What do they call this? Come on, turns up and down thermostat. temperature. Yeah, the thermostat. Thermostat. So you got your thermostat there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to, I don't know if it's supposed to spin like that. And it looks like that that knob is starting to get broken. So I'm going to go ahead and do it like that. Turn all the way to the lowest setting, which would actually be the highest setting. Number one's temperature is high. And uh, what does that mean? What's that mean? It's calling for cooling. Yep, and it should click off if I turned it and this knob wasn't split. It cracked right here, looks like, and it's not letting it turn all the way. So we might need to get a pair of needle nose or something to be able to turn that off to test the switch. Because that could be the problem. It could be the thermostat never shuts off and it actually freezes the food. But that's actually a good sign. And you should get some sort of resistance reading because you got the windings going through inside the compressor. And then this is one of the simplest wiring diagrams right here. We're gonna go over this in the front of the classroom. But 
pretty much what it is is just like a light bulb, all right? And then you have a switch, your thermostat, that turns on that and off that, uh, that piece of equipment. You also have another circuit to get the motor to spin. So we're gonna put also in series uh, a capacitor, okay, with that start winding. So that capacitor will come in and allow us. And then there's one other thing that also uses temperature that's mounted on the side of the body of the compressor. It's called an overload, all right? And I showed somebody that, I think, did you guys get to see the overload? Where I got to light it with a lighter and it popped the disc? No. Yeah. No? no? Some did, some did, maybe. That's okay, we'll show it again. There was an overload on the ground here the other day. There it is, yeah. So look, same thing, it's on the side. The overload, if you hear a ticking while the power's hooked up to the unit, Let's see if this overload's energized or not. Good. Let me see if I can have somebody hold it here like this. I might not need anybody to hold it. Let's see if I can get it to stay. So here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna heat up this overload, just like the compressor would be. If it couldn't start, it's trying to start, but it can't for whatever reason. I might burn my fingers here. Watch out, there's always an element of danger with me. You hear that click? Yeah. There's, if they, they figured out, it's the same thing like a thermostat. Some of the thermostats, you put two pieces of different metals together, dissimilar metals like brass and steel or nickel and cadmium, and they bend and expand and contract at different temperatures. One will bend over the other. So what I'm doing now is one of the metals is heating up when I put the flame to it, and that's causing it to spring up and bend, and it breaks the contact of the switch. That's the overload. That's the only other switch besides the thermostat that could break the power to that compressor right there. All right, and then there's one more circuit that sometimes has a capacitance circuit. Uh, so where's that switch at inside this? Behind this black case, oh. right? I pop this cover off on the black case and I'll see two switches. I'll see some sort of relay, a potential relay or a current relay, depending on what it is, and that overload switch. And then the other switch would be the thermostat. So that's pretty much it. So I, I, I'm safe, right? It's not grounded. Can I plug it in? Not grounded. Good. Good. So I can safely plug it in. And it should fire up. Can't hear it. AC unit. But you can feel it. Let's use our senses and tell me if that compressor is running or not. What about you, Felix? Yeah. How you know it's on? What are you feeling? For those that aren't jumping up here to feel it. Heat. No, there's no heat yet. Feel it. Tell me if it's hot. If it rain for about an hour, maybe it would be hot. But you can kind of feel the, the shake and the vibration a little bit. All right? Uh-oh. You hear that click? Did you just hear that click? You heard that click? Uh-oh, what do we think that was? The overload. Does it still feel like it's running? Those that just felt it vibrating a minute ago. It's not vibrating anymore. Broke. Could also confirm that. Can't get to the wires right here because they're all tied together and they actually did a really good job of, I might be able to clip one of them. I don't know, but it's tight. But we can measure amperage I'm actually going to use the other meter for that because the fork's kind of hard to get in there. But the amperage or the current flowing through the wire will confirm if that thing's running or not. And then you might hear it click again. Brand new. It hasn't even been used yet. Woo! I know. Let's see if it came with a battery in it. Okay, we're waiting. How about feeling that for a minute and telling us if it clicks back on? When it clicks. Just check it periodically. If it stayed running, other things that you would want to do, other things that you would want to do is open up the case and sort of feel this evaporator in here. If this thing was running, what would it feel like in here? How would that evaporator feel? Cold. Cold. Yep. And then you got two refrigerant lines, one coming out, one going in. 
That one's probably coming out. Discharge is usually smaller. Suction's usually bigger. They could be the same size, but how, what would this one feel compared to this one? One coming out would be, how would it be coming out? Cold. You think it'd be cold? Like if you just got squished from a space like that to a space like that, are you gonna be cold? Uh, no. What are you gonna be? Warm. Warm, you're gonna be really warm. You're gonna be very hot. And actually yeah. that's the discharge line. Discharge line is the hottest line. Uh oh, you hear that? Yeah. You, you heard a click, but mm -hmm. what do you hear? It going. Is it going or what? I don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel a vibration. I feel a vibration, but I don't know if it's spinning like it was. It was, no, I don't know. Here, put your, uh oh. There's that click again. Heard it. It's humming. It's humming. It's humming. It's not. It's not vibrating humming. anymore. Now it's humming. So now we got to put the amp probe around it to measure the current flowing through the wire. Now, if I can't clip around one of these wires, we'll have to unplug the power and take that black case off. And that black case will reveal our overload, which is what you're hearing click, just like that one I just hit here. There's another part they use in heating, it's called a sequencer. It uses the same thing to activate the switch. It uses heat, temperature. It's a waiting game. I hear it get humming and hawing. Like, that's the way it is. To use all the senses and everything, you gotta wait. Listen to it click. Stop messing with the bikes, please. Let's just uh, be patient and watch, that's some of the gang here. No tapping, just chill, thank you. We're recording, this is my broadcast. This is our first video back for this new year on YouTube. Yeah, we're almost up to 100,000 views. Season two? I don't know, we'll see. I haven't seen nothing yet. Season two? Season two, that's right, season two, it is an HVAC. So we gotta try and get this little thing clipped around. And maybe this is gonna tell us, or it might have two wires in there that are small. So what do I wanna read? What, is, what, what should I set this thing? There's all these choices. What, what should I choose? Uh, v? What do I, what's V? Voltage. Voltage, yeah, do I wanna check voltage? I need these to check voltage. Uh-uh, it says EF. What, what, what do I need? Uh, I need something. That's not a, amps, there we go. So I'm looking for an amps. Man. There we go. Amps DC. No, I want AC. District of Columbia. That's continuity. That's my temperature probe. It says you micro amps DC. I don't want micro amps. There we go. Amps AC up top there. And then we got 50, and then you got 400 amps. So we'll probably go look at the nameplate here. Maximum amp rating. Maximum amp rating. There's our rated voltage. It doesn't have an amp rating on here. Yeah, there we go. 1.3 amps says rated current. Uh, 1.3 amps. Mm, lock road is probably 100 times that. Lock road is 12. 0.5, which is close, a thousand times that on me. Yeah, so we can stay with the 50, under 50 amps. Get a close up of this, because when it clicks again, that means you get a close up of this. That means you too. Everybody, look, look. Look at the number when it clicks. Because if it's not spinning and it's trying to, the lock rotor amps number will appear. Gotta wait. It's a waiting game. And the lock rotor amps while we're looking. That's what it's supposed to be, this 1.3, when it's running normally, or somewhere about 80% of that. So it could be like 1.11. If it's locked up, that's on the compressor here. 
locked rotor amps is 12.5. So you tell me if it's 1.5 or less or 12.5, about. 12. You gotta read it. And then you can oh. tell me if it's locked up or if it's running. Not locked up. Well, it says no, it's the overload's it's keeping it. You gotta complete the circuit. We're waiting for that click, waiting for the heat to cool it down. On the bigger units for your house, your air conditioning units that you have with the compressors that are bigger outside, they have that overload in the compressor. That's something that you can't access. So you might see guys, if it's overloaded, trying to hose it down with water, trying to cool it down. Because sometimes to let it cool down naturally could take hours, four or five hours. So then you go run another call and go back to their house after it's been shut off and cooled down for a while to check it. Most of the time people misdiagnose it as a bad compressor when actually it could be just something as simple as an overload rarely is that the case more than likely it's a capacitor the capacitors not allowing the start winding because you need two you can't just have the positive and the negative the one circuit you need a second one to get that magnet to spin the first time sometimes if this had been a changed out compressor they didn't wire up the comm and the start and the run right and that also would give you this, uh-oh, that's weird. There's the amps. 5.4. So, is that bigger than 1.3? Yes. And then it means 12.5, it could get up to that if it gets, gets enough. So what do you think? Locked up. Locked up. Locked up. So we got a locked up compressor. Go ahead and pause that.